What the heck? I just got hit before I could see him. Is this a hacker or Peeker's advantage? Hello everyone, this is CCTL, and today we're gonna go over what Peeker's advantage is and some strategies to use in these encounters. And no, that was not a hacker, that was me demonstrating Peeker's advantage. Now let's dive in. Peeker's advantage consists mainly of three components of which you have little or no control over. Latency or netcode, aim punch and stamina drain. Stamina drain isn't that relevant in situations where Peeker's advantage is at its worst, so we won't cover that one. Let's start off by briefly touching base on netcode. I have a more in-depth walkthrough on this that will be linked up here and at the end if you're interested, but I'll do a quick summary of how this affects Peeker's advantage. Networking in first-person shooters is tricky, so I'll try to explain the most important factors as simply as possible. In most games, including Tarkov from what I gathered, the server always lags behind the clients. Your client, along with everyone else's, is sending actions to the server as you do them. The server then processes all those actions and sends back the current state to each of the clients. The client can't wait until confirmations that all other clients have applied any changes. If they did wait for all actions to be processed before letting you proceed, there would be a lot of latency or stutters whenever you pressed a key. However, there is some synchronization and sometimes it sends you back in time to what it understands to be the most up-to-date current state. Hence that pesky pack -a symbol and rubber banding effect bringing you back in time. But hey, at least we have time travel. Now that you know the server has a view of the past, which needs to get sent back to all other clients, you should be able to see why peaking gives you such an advantage. But by how much? In terms of movement and shot audio visual, a minimum of 250 milliseconds on average and just under 100 milliseconds for hit registration. And that's with a ping of just under 30. So with those numbers, let's demonstrate how a peaking player has such a substantial advantage. A peaking player can see the other player 250 milliseconds before the other player can see them. This is like a 250 millisecond blackout period where they have the ability to shoot the other player. Drill that number into your head, we're gonna use it later. This is important because even though the average human reaction time is 273 milliseconds, Many first-person shooter players probably have one that's much lower than that. Mine's 191, so let's just add 200 milliseconds for argument's sake. Let me know how yours stacks up. I'll put a link to this tool in the description. Anyways, so the person being peaked is behind 450 milliseconds minimum before they can reliably get a shot off, and 550 milliseconds until it can disrupt the peaker by landing. But hold on there, cowboy. There's another mechanic that really drives peaker's advantage home aim punch, and I covered this in depth in another video that also will be linked at the end. But the short and sweet is your vision is blurred for around 100 milliseconds on average after being hit, and it takes anywhere from 400 milliseconds to one second for your crosshair to return to where it was. This is average and generalized information, so check out that other video. As I stated before, hit registration is just under 100 milliseconds with good ping, so the Pika should be able to get a shot off before being seen and it would register on the other player 40 to 50 milliseconds after they can see you. If the person peeking hits you, you won't be able to react to them until now around 400 milliseconds after they see you. Add 200 milliseconds for reaction time and now you're at a whopping 600 milliseconds. 100 milliseconds for hit registration and you're at 700 milliseconds before you can affect the peeker. However, with this aim punch, the direction your gun was pointed in won't be exactly where it was originally pointed. It's likely going to take you 750 milliseconds before your aim is reasonable enough to fire and hit your target, bringing the total peaker advantage to 850 milliseconds after the initial hit. Wow, that was easy. Or not. This scenario is only with one bullet, but that peaking Chad, they're likely going to be stacking those aim punches. So what can we do to combat this? First, do not be stationary when being peaked. Try to move from one side to the other so their client is forced to change where it is rendering you. Second, use gear that has a very low movement speed penalty so that you can move further in those crucial milliseconds. Third, hipfire works wonders in these situations because it doesn't slow you down. Fourth, throw that 9x19 ammo in the trash. Use high power calibers to maximize the amount of aim punch that you inflict on your enemy. Fifth. Toss your bag and anything else that you can on the ground before fights to maximize your movement speed. Six, don't wait until you have a thorax hit. Hitting them in the arms is just as good because it will aim punch the crap out of them. If you can, play in the lowest ping service possible, 60 FPS minimum, 
and you be the one that peaks. And remember, this is Tarkov and game not easy and it frustrating and you will die a lot. Well, that's all I wanted to cover today. There'll be links to the netcode and aim punch videos at the end. Let me know what you think in the comments for that YouTube algorithm thing everyone's talking about. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like out of that shit button, subscribe for more Tarkov content like this, and I will see you on the battlefield. CZTL out.